Hey, <laughs> welcome everybody. This is the finals. The Hero Type Tempo Storm series. We've had five very exciting weeks and it's all come down to this. My name is Aloran. It's my pleasure to be your master of ceremonies for the evening along with... Here we go. The Fox of Hots, <laughs> the Kitsune of Heroes, your neighborhood friendly community coach, Kalamak. As you do. Doing well, man. How are you today? You know, or tonight, I'm, actually. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I, <laughs> if I had one word to describe my current state of being, it would be excited. I've been yeah, dude, me too. This, uh, <laughs> since the beginning. And, and you know, guys, I almost tried to add, I tried to add another moniker, another, another notch in the belt for old Kyle, another feather in the cap, but. We come to find out, Kalamaka has in fact not seen Ferris Bueller's day off. So we can't we can't call Kala the, the Ferris Bueller of heroes. I you know, as our I young knew you were baiting me. You were baiting me with that question. I, I, had hopes, I had hopes. I had hopes. I'm sorry. I have so, failed. I have failed you, Anakin. I have failed you. We 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 will we will get this guy to see to see that. Oh my gosh! Right. But on. yeah. On to more pressing matters. This is the finals. The top eight teams who have battled out throughout five weeks of season play uh, will be competing for that ever-expanding prize pool that you see towards the top right. Our mm -hmm. goal would be to get to 1,500 tonight. We'd love to see that. A special thanks to Valera, too, who uh, going into tonight actually donated $111? That's insane. That's actually so sweet. Thank you very much yeah. for the support. Like That's actually so cool. Yeah, we've had some some really cool donations. I know Graysville donated a bunch earlier uh, in the season. Valera two, Valera two has just stepped in and uh, really showed their support for the community, which uh, we love to see. And um, we're gonna have a lot of stuff to give back to the community. Uh, Blizzard themselves have been really kind and have uh, given us some codes to give away. So we'll have a bunch of Diva and Genji. Giveaways, just be active in the chat. That's all you need to do is just say something in the chat and uh, you'll be randomly in for the, the winnings there. The lovely admins, I believe Royal Light is in charge of that effort. Um, jump into the chat, get involved, and uh, could come away with a pretty neat... Send us your hottest, freshest memes and then you get Genji or Diva out of it. Like, why wouldn't you do that, you know? You know, speaking of fresh, Droplets in the chat said that, that I was that, that it's Wednesday and I, and I was fresh. So <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> it is Wednesday, my dude. Yeah. But uh, we are ready to jump right into the uh, the first best of three. Now, with stakes this high, we cannot have best of one. So all the matches we'll see tonight uh, between the top eight teams will be best of three affairs. So our first games will be four guys and a legend squaring off against Scorpion Raccoon, who uh, we got to talk with them. Last last week they they came away to winners of week five, so I was really excited to see these guys uh, show what they got in the finals. They banded out they banded out Forehead Junction. Brax's holdout was in the Ooh. band with four guys in legend. So we game see that. one. It's gonna be one thousand. I wonder why so many teams ban off Forehead Junction. Like it is the it's the upset capital, you know. Like I, I guess that's why, but like I don't know. I like seeing that map personally. I'm not actually as big of a hater of that map as most people are. So. Yeah. I think it's a map that invites the most amount of cheese. Yes. And if you don't yeah. know your opponent, like you can definitely get blindsided by some kind of yep. oddball composition. But apparently uh Cursed Hollows in that list too, if you saw <laughs> <laughs> she's seen his past season. But uh Yep. I mean, um Four Guys and a Legend, you and I got to um cast a bunch of their games too. So I'm excited to see them again. Those guys are actually wild. And same with the new guys, right? I'm not sure if we're gonna be following them, but that was another team that we got to spend a bunch of time with. Actually, we may be following them because they could very well make it to the finals. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll have to see. All right. I just got into the lobby. Let me go ahead and invite our community coach, the neighborhood friendly Kalamalka into the fold as well let me go ahead and update the names of the titles ahead of time because i'm good at this and i know <laughs> all right so on the left on the left we got four guys and a lone legend so i'm gonna put four guys 
And on the right, we're going to have Scorpion. Raccoon. What a cool name. I wonder how they made that name. I need to find out. Well, here's the thing. Let's see. Let me see if I did it. Because we had to talk to them because they won last week. Yep. Oh, they're starting up. Oof, jumping into Towers of Doom on the current patch. So uh, do you think, uh, what, what sort of comps do you think we're going to see coming out? What do you think right out of the gates? I think it's going to be a wild scene, man. <laughs> uh, they definitely showed they know how to play uh, a new brat quite well last week. So Oof. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him get highly prioritized by way of either ban or selection. Excited to see that. All right, do I got it spaced out right? Looks like, looks like I do. Looks like I do. Abathur banning. So uh, four guys in a legend on the left. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So they are banning off the Abathur. Abathur that early. You know, I don't know. I wouldn't be scared of somebody one twoing Abathur unless they gray main Abathur. But usually it's not the biggest deal. But uh, I guess they just want to remove that from the equation because Abathur is just so good on this map. And then Dahaka banned as well. So those are both pretty standard bans. Wonder what we see for first pick. There's a lot of options out there. We do see a new Ooh, there he is. snapped up by four guys in the legend. Not surprised to see that by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, the Abathur and the Hakuban say to me, like, just play us straight up, fight us face to face, see how you do there. Don't want to deal with any sort of cheese or wild shenanigans. And then Nubarak, I think that might be something of a bit of homework on the side of four guys in the legend. They saw what a Nubarak did for the members of Scorpion Raccoon. I wouldn't want to deal with that either. Me either. Cocoon is one of my favorite heroics in the game. It allows you to set up like the most advantageous team fights. Uh, basically, like forces a four v five. Like it is such a crazy heroic and it's such a low cooldown. Like uh, I, I'm stoked to see how this team uh, works around it. So uh, the response, though, do we see Greymane? Do we see Malfurion? Uh, I wonder where they're going to be placing their priorities here. Well, as far as map specific quasi cheese goes, we do see some. Okay, so it's Greymane and Ethan. Green Man Uther makes sense. The Guther combo. Yeah. Because um, usually you're not going to have solo a new Barak. Not mm. always, but uh, you know sometimes there'll be another. Okay, so there's the other warrior as well. Ooh, and the Genji. Okay, let's go. <laughs> they're they're going to be looking to dive on the back line here. You have a new Barak for super deep dive, plus the cocoon onto Uther, and then uh, mm. Tyrael as well as Genji just diving onto the back lines. So that is a scary 1-3 for, um, for four guys in a legend. That's sweet. I'm so stoked to see some Genji. <laughs> Scorpion Raccoon was like, haha guys, we got Grayman, we're about to jump in your face at a moment's notice, and we could potentially even take Divine Shield, how about that? And but hey, guys like, in Legend were like, how about that? We'll just take Tyrael <laughs> and Genji, and we already have a new Brack, so your mage on the back line has a lot of mobility, because we're going to be on her face, or their face. <laughs> both of these openers are super scary. Malfurion and Varian both removed. I'm not 100% sure about the Varian, perhaps there's something that, uh, I'm not seeing, or we're not seeing, but, um, mm. all right. So we're probably going to see a warrior come out now. Um, I'm not even sure what types of warriors Scorpion Raccoon plays. Maybe Muradin? Uh, but, uh, yeah, because there's not going to be another warrior picked up for the other team. Um, I feel like the name of the game is going to have to be Peel here. So yeah, it's could not be. like a Muradin. Johanna could definitely come to the equation. Yeah, that's you true. need that Condemned It's going to snatch... Genji Interior away from your, your squishier heroes. Tychus yep. and Leoric, a sound response to double warrior setup. Yep. Oh, no. Dude, they've got the Leoric for the Drain Hope, Tychus for destroying those warriors, and Leoric's going to be the solo laner, obviously, so it's probably going to be into either the Tyrael or the Anubrak, because chances are we're not going to see both those war warriors uh, rocking the rotation, so the Leoric is a good pick. He's going to win that solo lane. Um, and then the four-man with Greymane is also pretty scary, but uh, I swear Genji's going to be the, the pick, like the play player of the game here. We'll, we'll have to see how... Uh, how that pick works out for four guys in a legend, but probably a mage coming through as well as their support. Maybe a uh, Regar Li Ming. What are you thinking? I think we could see either one of those heroes. The more I'm looking at the comps so far, the the Genji pick is something of a bold statement because Uther is one of the few heroes that has a point and click instantaneous stun, and on a quick hero like Genji, that's the last place you want to find yourself. That's if very there's true. enough follow up lockdown in this fifth pick for the members of Scorpion Raccoon. He could be getting rocked anytime he tries to show up. So we'll see if that happens with that last pick. But show us potato salad. Ball stand. 
and Rhaegar. So there's the Rhaegar, and I guess they're going Falstad for their pseudo mage. Plus the global, honestly, that's a fantastic pickup. Uh, Genji's so strong in his rotations, and Falstad's mm -hmm. going to be able to fly on basically any one of those targets. Leoric's going to have to be playing super safe in the top lane. He does have his Wraith Walk, so he's going to be able to get away from most of the uh, of the ganks. But, um, you know, every target over on Scorpion Raccoon is going to be susceptible to ganking with Falstad Genji. Yeah, I mean, Genji's pretty much a global hero in their own right as far as ganks go. He can just yep. jump in from downtown with his There's the Murden. Down and zip out. We do see Murden there to round out ye old composition. Best of three. Not a bad start. Okay, it's interesting. Okay, so we had the Greyman and Uther picked up in the 1 2 for Scorpion mm -hmm. Raccoon, right? Which is like, you look at Greyman and Uther and you're like, that's Divine Shield, that's a diving dog, right? Like, that's a heavy dive comp. But then the 2 3 for um, for Four Guys and a Legend come out with Tyrael Greyman. They're like, okay, 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 maybe we have to be a little bit more dynamic. They pick the Tychus, which is really good into double warrior plus dive comps. And then mm -hmm. they pick the. Um, uh, the Murden as a last pick. So I think that was a fantastic response for Scorpion Raccoon. I think I'm curious. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what hero get picked for both Uther and Greymane because, you know, you go up against Double Warrior, Curse Bullet's going to get you value left, right, and center one way or the other. But yeah. go for the throat on a low health Genji is practically a free trip to the recycle bin for that hero. So there's a lot of value to be had one way or the other. I mean, we've uh, got the double warriors too, plus Curse Bullet, and it's recently seen a buff. So there's also that, uh, plus the Tychus and Leoric. Like, they're just going to shred through warriors. But uh, we'll have to see which heroics they end up going with. That. First game of the evening. This is the finals. On the left side, we got four guys and a legend. It's going to be LZ Gamer on Genji, L Hams on Rhaegar, Legend is playing False Dad, Jin's on Anubarak, and Talent will round it out on Tyrion. And on the right in red is Scorpion Raccoon. We got Sore on Greymane, we got Nailter on Uther, Jazz hitting that Muradin, Electromat on Tychus, and Earthshaker playing that Skeleton King. Five, four, three, two, one. Mm -hmm. How will this play out? Immediately, uh, Falstad heading to the top lane. It doesn't look like they want this skirmish, which is probably the best call. You know, you've got the Murden, you got the Greyman plus the Uther. That's so much single target lockdown plus burst. I actually like the call to not uh, just throw everybody into the mid lane for four guys and a legend. We're not trying to see the the one v one scraps here. The members of four guys and legend. We have a practice and measured approach to the game. We're Oof, just watch this to... rotation too. Oh, Earthshaker, be careful, good sir. Gets jumped on. There's the E. Is he gonna be able to get out of there? Earthshaker <laughs> on the ropes. Rao raised. He's able to escape. Him. And we got the immediate response with Scorpion Raccoon looking to push this bottom lane. It doesn't look like they're going to look to get any damage on the tower. Just drain some of that uh, ammunition. Okay, they get a little bit of damage traded out. So, actually pretty favorable for Scorpion Raccoon, even though it's not a whole lot. Genji's rotating down, turning this into a 3v3. Sour Ray potentially caught forward, is able to get back in time, however. Talion's like a pretty rough end of that trade, though. So that's something that four guys in Legend will be for sure concerned about. They're on a timer when they step on that front line. And uh, Scorpion Raccoon, the Murden, is going to have a little bit of a difficulty maintaining his lane in the middle here. If Jin just keeps pushing out on that Anubarak, he's going to have a fine time into the Murden. So I would actually expect for the three on Scorpion Raccoon to stay bottom just because they do win this lane. Genji can't really deep push a whole lot. He's looking for those picks. So I like what they're doing here, just keeping uh, the 3v3 in the bottom lane. L aim, LZ Gamer. Jin's going to start the rotate up. Sour Ray will start the Sapper Camp in the bottom right corner of the map. Nailter joins him. Jin potentially sniffs this out. Sherlock Holmes detection detected. He's able to pick that up, but doesn't invade. Just going to go and trade out Sapper Camps. The first three altars of the match show up. Level four, not too far away for either one of these teams. Going to be interesting. I actually liked that call to invade from Jin. He just didn't have the follow-up from his team, or they called him off as a shot caller because they do have the global, right? They could have just flown in the false dad and looked to contest the uh, the Sapper camp for Scorpion Raccoon, but they decided to just play it a little bit safer. They do have the global, so it is easier to get to two out of the three of these um, altars. So let's see how they play it out. False dad, barrel rolling away from danger. Talent actually taking quite a bit of damage here. The sword goes out. Uh, he actually okay. He does go back to it. I thought he was going to miss the timer on it and take out a bit too much damage there. Meanwhile, bottom does get capped. Four guys in a legend. 
One for one so far. Talion trying to delay the proceedings in the top left. He was surrounded by a field of red earlier. So ultimately, Scorpion Raccoon will enjoy for the moment a four point lead on the core by way of getting two altars to three. And it seems like four guys in Legends are just more committed to getting towards the late game, getting their heroics. And with their comp, I think they have a lot of tools in our arsenal to really succeed there. So they don't want to fall behind. I, I get it. And there's also massive push for four guys in a legend to the spot lane. They got the entire wall plus half of that fort. Uh, and that's really, really early. So, um, you know, if they're able to capitalize and grab their sapper camp again in about 30 seconds, they're going to be able to grab that fort and have um, probably a level seven advantage plus uh, be able to have five shots on the next altar phase. That's the trade. We'll give you two altars at the beginning of the game yep. and we'll have all kinds of value and pressure at the bottom. You don't exactly have the uh, the burn down siege comp. I mean, you have Grey Main for some siege damage. It's like it kind of does it to a degree, but if they can keep that pressure in the bot lane, they have a pretty good time. But we do have a oh. pause electro. We got the 3 2 3. <laughs> the old ye old 3 2 3. So yep. I'll bring us back to our face fronts. And I actually just wanted to talk about Legend on the Falstad into, um, into the Leoric. Usually, Falstad has a pretty difficult time with that, um, but he's been, I would say, commanding the lane quite well, so good on him for that one. Um, and also the auto attack build going through for Falstad. I, I wasn't 100% sure if he was going to do that, because usually you want the kind of like the burst style mage kind of build with the Genji follow up because you're looking mm. for those resets, but they did decide to go full auto attack build so far, so we'll see how that uh, pays off for them. And Shuriken Mastery at level 4. Like I said, Season Marksman, Region Master for Tyrael. Cocktail build thus far for Greymane, Wave of Light in Pursuit of Justice. Yeah, pretty standard stuff I'd <laughs> see all around. The bigger they are, I like seeing that talent a lot. Willing Vessel increases healing from Drain Hope 30%. Nice. The only odd thing I saw, it's not even odd, but uh, the perfect storm on Muradin. It's not odd at all, but uh, I love that talent. But um, I'm not 100% sure if it's necessary with this comp, but he is going to be getting a lot of value uh, with it, considering how there's a multiple frontline target. So that's kind of uh, a little bit of a different one. Usually you, you'll see, um, I guess, not really block against the Genji because of the three shots, but uh, maybe the third wind. But yeah, I like it. I'm I always question the value that's gathered at a perfect storm because it seems like, you know, I'll watch an HTC game or, or a game here in Hero Sight and then I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Merlin took perfect storm. And then by mm -hmm. the end of the game, I'm like, I'm really trying to see what kind of damage th this, because you expect to see the storm bolt slap somebody in their face and, and just chunk like, them, right? right. Yeah. But it doesn't happen in most cases. I'm just like, I don't also. Know. It can gain inverse value if you're using it because you want to stack it, right? That's the whole point. Right. So let's say just somebody rolls right beside you and you just throw out your Q and stun them. And then maybe you jump back on your mount and you don't have it for like a snap stun that you can make like moments later that would have resulted in a kill. Uh, so you can completely lose out that way as well. Um, so it can gain inverse value that way. It doesn't usually happen too, too much, but it can. It's certainly a possibility. I agree, man. Like, yeah. if you're just using Storm Bolt, at, you know, as an engage tool or appeal tool when you take Perfect Storm, by the end of the game, you might not have the most amount of damage one could possibly have. But if you're sitting there just spamming Q, like, you know, Storm Bolt, hey, 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 it's off cooldown. Storm, like, yeah, you throw the Storm Bolt, you get the stun out there, it feels good, man. And then <laughs> your back line gets jumped on by a new bacterial and you're like, oh, well... I could have stunned, but hey, I got five more damage. I hope that comforts you as you wait to respawn. Okay, I wonder if we're <laughs> going to see some like absolutely insane tower dives or fort dives or what have you, because we have Under King on Anubarak plus False mm. Dead Fly, and Genji obviously can go deeper than like any hero in this game. Um, so I wonder what we're going to be seeing with that, you know, and plus the Tyrael on their side, like, you know, the super heavy dives with Under King and then Sanctification on top of the Genji. And we got the uh, Ryujin no Kenwo Kudea. Yeah, that's what he says, right? Is that my Japanese? Is it so bad? <laughs> but yeah, so he's going to be killing people on the backside with that uh, <laughs> Dragon Blade. And I'm stoked to see it. Right, yeah. Next, we might be ready to get back into the game. But yeah, I mean, all right, so they have five... So, all right, Jazz said ready. I was a gamer said ready. Perfect. And it says we good. I was, uh, three. Five, five, three, apparently. Two, <laughs> one. Rip four. 
Okay. A little bit of a skirmish going on in the bot lane. Uh, Uther uh -oh. actually taking a lot of damage. The bite goes through and Elheim secures the kill. He takes a boatload of damage and gets taken <laughs> down. The first takedown of the game, no less. Level 7, not too far for the members of Four Guys and a Legend. And they might be the Scorpions this game. I mean, they played it real passive. They just kind of recoiled in a corner, got fresh in the bot lane during the first altar phase. Check this out, but though. But they definitely like, should they know how to strike. Okay, so they have that level 7 now, right? Uh, they have their, their sappers pushing on the bottom side of the camp. Now, Scor or bottom side of the map. Now, Scorpion Raccoon are going to have to try to decide, like, what do we do? Give up this turn in, or do we take, uh, like, uh, an entire fort? Or, actually, it's only half of the fort, but let the sappers push in and lose the fort. So, really good call by Four Guys and a Legend. I love this play. Fancy play for sure. Electro Mag gets jumped on in the bottom portion of the map. He's not too much a fan of all that. LZ Gamer gets the stun from Uther. He's able to hit his cyber agility to get out of there. Earthshaker is going to start to channel this altar. Can Jin get in there in time? Doesn't need to. Legend rotates in from the top portion of the map. Nice double knockup from the impale. No one's claiming his altar just yet. We're both of these teams having a level 7 talent. This could tell us a lot about the rest of the game. So, Four Guys and a Legend uh, weren't able to push in their Sapper camp, so they lost a bit of value on it there. You know, they have super um, stall capacity with the uh, with the Genji here, so they're probably going to look to stall as long as they can, gain some value with the false stat. Um, and that's probably their only play here. They might be looking to give up another alt alter and uh, just try to get level 10 before their opponents. Ultimately, the alter is going to get snapped up by the members of Scorpion Raccoon. They're down in experience though, a full level and some change, so this might be one of those situations where they're winning battles, but the war could definitely come in for debate later on. That's we'll true. See. We also saw crazy value coming out from uh, Guardian of Ancient Kings, the uh, mm. level 7 Uther talent. Uh, that being said, actually, the dive goes in onto the Greymane uh, for the enemy, or sorry, the Scorpion Raccoon's camp, and uh, they're not, they're looking for more actually. LZ Gamer getting caught a little bit, taking some damage, but uh, four guys in a legend just looking to turn around, steal that Sapper camp away from their opponents. Uh, heads up play, and they're almost level 10 as well. Life comes at you fast. I mean, you get the altar, you're feeling pretty good, you go for the sapper camp, and then surprise, everyone jumps on your face from the enemy team. And that's going to be the second takedown. And those all those sappers will make their way to that bottom peak and claim it. And then four, five points on the core next time. Poor guys, a legend can move them all. The experience differential here is going to be the story of this game. Like, the Falstead is gaining so much value. I actually really like that call to pull away from that uh, middle altar and just look to push out top more. Earthshaker taking crazy damage from Legend as well. We were talking about this uh, basically 1v1 in the top lane and manages to kill the Leoric again. Follow up here from Tyrael. Leoric pulls a vanishing act. He will be back. Hashtag trait value. Another pause. Oh. Can pause the game and I'll bring us back to the front of our faces. But I was mentioning it just a moment ago before that uh, invade on Scorpion Raccoon Sapper Camp. Uh, the Guardian of the Ancient Kings, okay? So three people from Four Guys in the Legend dove onto Tychus and he lost maybe 10, 15% of his health after a uh, heal from Uther. Like, that's crazy. The amount of um, mitigation from the engage on Anubarak is like actually insane. <laughs> I think it's I think it's the preferred talent level seven. Yeah. If you're going up against uh, any kind of lockdown and a new brack brings a boatload of that to the table, it's like, oh, you stun my you stun my uh my teammate. Suddenly he's a tank for a couple seconds because they're getting seventy five armor. Good luck. Like it's actually crazy. I I personally like it better than cleanse in most situations, as we were just talking about. But yeah. All right. Looks looks like, like everyone's back. Game already. Wait. Oh, jabated. <laughs> Damn. And yeah, we did see like completely uh, standard talents as well. You know, there's Dragon Blade, Mighty Gust, Cocoon, Sanctification, and Ancestral Healing. So looking at that team fight capacity for Four Guys and a Legend. <laughs> and we're back. Back in the game. Thanks to our good old fashioned art. You know, they just they just don't make them like that. <laughs> Heroic's not too far away for the members of Scorpion Raccoon, but perhaps a bit too late. I mean, this ult's gonna be two ults we've got in 20 seconds. Jazz gets spotted on the rotation. The burrow is gonna miss. LZ Gamer on the case. Jazz leg. I'm just gonna dwarf toss out of here if you don't mind. 
I'm not that's... sure. They're getting a lot of experience, but I don't know if they'll have heroics to really make a stand for these ults. No, I think Scorpion Raccoon just have to focus on this bottom fort and just give up both Three, of these altars. They may be able to spawn or stall a little bit, but I don't actually see that happen. Yeah, Elham just taking that top one for free, as well as uh, Legend on the Fall stat. So that's actually that was only nine shots, right? This um, we got five and then four, I believe the captain no, time. It was, just, it was just eight. Oh, okay, never they mind. I didn't. The, yeah, they got the bottom like keep in the time, the bottom tower back. So Perfect. they managed to minimize the damage, but that was one of those situations where the war starts to make itself apparent. And now level 10. So we actually do have Divine Shield plus the Cursed Bullet, a little bit of counter synergy there. Um, yeah, I was actually expecting to see maybe go for the throat with cursed bullet or with a divine shield or perhaps a divine storm with the uh, cursed bullet, but uh, we'll see uh, how they're going to play out these team fights. Scorpion and Raccoon are definitely going to be looking to force a fight before four guys in a legend hit level thirteen because this is pretty much their only window before these next altars spawn. Yeah, they could find themselves in a very painful progression where they're down tiers more often than not. I agree with you, Kala. I think the onus is on them. Try to make something happen now. A pretty nice cursed bullet target. Jin is able to burrow out of there. They're not looking to fight just yet. Both teams are cognizant of where they're at as far as experience goes. Scorpion and Raccoon wants to fight. Jin and the boys, not so much. No, exactly. Four guys in a legend have nothing to lose. Or sorry, they have everything to lose. They can they can literally just sit back <laughs> on their um their their towers and just wait for the experience to pour in. They're gonna hit 13 right now, and uh, now they're actually going to look and you know they can just try to step up and steal the sapper camp away from Scorpion Raccoon. They could try to push another fort, and both of these altars are up. So this is this is the play to make here. Four guys in a legend. Starting to become a more and more awkward situation for the members of Scorpion Raccoon. Two altars showing up in 13, nowhere in sight in the next 10 seconds. They're going to have to try to defend this or let it go. I think the best idea would be at most try to posture for one altar and let the other one go. But if they lose a bunch of heroes here, this could be one of those snowball situations that they can't recover from. But they isolate Talion. They get enough lockdown on him. He finally goes down. Jin potentially the next target. Sour Ray's not... He gets but, cocooned rather than Tyrion getting blown up on. And I mean, one for, one for one, actually, because Legend on the top side, again, <laughs> just absolutely bodying the Leoric, which is incredible play from this false dad. Um, so one for one plus both altars going over to four guys and a Legend. Uh, they are just absolutely commanding this mid-game horn. Your arrogance. Yeah, I mean, we saw their passive play. They're like, all right, you can get two altars early on. That's, that's not, that's, not, that's fine. We'll just go ahead and get ahead and experience. We'll get a tier advantage. And then when it comes to these critical moments, you're kind of in these awkward checkmate positions. Jin's Jin's the target. There's the Entomb. The Mighty Gust is not going to be enough. A new Barak the Bug finds himself smashed on the old windshield. Scorpion Raccoon showing signs of life. So they got their level 13 now. They're gonna be looking to force so many fights before that 16 comes in. And have a look at the top uh, right fort. Look at the health on it. So um, four guys in a legend have that prepared. They're not even pushing out the top wave. They're basically just gonna let it crash in, wait for the altars to spawn, and then Falstad's going to look to just like push the wave out and uh, capture the top altar. Actually, uh, Earthshaker getting caught out as well. Talent looking to get a little bit more damage here. The barrel roll comes out. Uh, the sword as well, and that's secure to kill onto the orc. Earthshake is probably feeling a little picked on at this moment for good reason. Anytime he ventures towards the middle of the map, there's a rotation there, it seems like. Talion could be subject to some damage from Grey Mane. He's able to keep and get out of there. Legend's going to go back. And I really like this decision from four guys in a legend. They save that top right altar to have it at five health. So when this shows up, they can knock that down pretty much for free. They're almost level 16, three altars showing up. This could be a huge is swing. Is Talion pushed out too far, though? Look, he's he's going to sword over to steal the cap. Oh, see, and he's just going to die for this. Like, he's 100% going to die for this. I'm not sure if that was worth There's the Sanctification. Uh, they actually played that a little bit improperly. Oh, the sword comes out as well. There's me saying 100% going to die, and definitely not. The Gust is also available, so Talent should actually live here as long as uh, he plays this one properly. Is the Gust going to come out? There it is. And what? Oh, so close, so close. Not even close, bro. If he dropped the B step, <laughs> I would personally understand. Jazz is gonna get beat up a little bit. Dwarf toss is out of there. The Jazz Hands Gambit is successful. Ancestral healing is gonna land. The top left altar actually does get claimed by four guys and a legend. Two so far, leaving only 10 points left. And the chase continues. Genji dashes forward, tries to get some takedowns. No resets just yet. Divine Shield goes in. 
on Tegas, who's trying to get some damage. Gray Mane's going to be first to fall. Jazz Dwarf tosses over the wall. Talion still survives. LZ Gamer on the chase. Uh-oh. He might have gotten a little too close to home. He's going to get out of there, too. <laughs> the rest of Scorpion Raccoon taking the fort damage on the top side as well. They they look for that 16 to 14 fight. Was that the long con by Talion? Like... He had everybody chase him, and then all of a sudden, Scorpion and Raccoon were pushed like 70% of the way across the map, and they really couldn't disengage in time. They they tried to force a fight 14 to 16 and lost it terribly. Jazz hands, man. Absolute <laughs> jazz hands. It was just like, hey guys, look at me. I'm Tyrion. I'm taking your top off. How's that feel? Not too good, I'm assuming. And then they all rotate on him. He drops sanctification, dashes out again, and they chase him Benny Hill style. Failed to come away with the takedown and come up losing all three altars. That's insane. Well, I thought the Jazz Hands was a pun on Muradin, but uh, <laughs> I see what you're doing, Ooh. though. <laughs> like, it's true. Uh, the Orc actually getting chunked out as well. Or, sorry, not even chunked out. He just completely got blown up. Oh. The, uh, the Cocoon goes out. I'm not sure. Oh, my gosh. The Sanctification okay. was so good. That Under King play. Beautiful. The dive onto Tychus onto the backside with Under King plus the sword over and sanct Sanctification by Tyrael. Like... I wouldn't call it BM, but they're definitely styling. I would have to call it that. It was forward-leaning in nature, and with that takedown, that could fade the way to the end of the game as the ball's already down to 50% health, and this makes it a last this effort for Scorpion Raccoon. Can they step in here? No sanctification to consider. LZ Gamer drops the sword, though. doing damage. Holy ground. Is that going to be enough? Does it come out? And there's the cap, and that is GG. So... My, my, my. So it was, it was the long con. I, I love saying that, but um, you know, four guys in a legend, they recognize the strengths of their comp, right? They had the false stat. Uh, they, they basically just wanted to get um, level 10 as soon as they could. And we saw them getting level 10. They gave up, um, they gave up a bunch of altars early. They, we saw them hitting level 10 against level eight. So that is such a substantial lead. Like they, it's really hard to come back against that when you don't have the global on your side, right? Like you're you're having to force fights. Sometimes they're disadvantageous. Like you you don't have the talent advantage, et cetera, et cetera. So it can be really difficult, especially for you know teams that haven't been together for the longest period of time. Playing from the back foot is just always so tough. I mean, that was that was a, that was a really interesting game there because yeah. You know, at the beginning, it was like, all right, you guys can take two altars. It's fine. We'll have yep. you prioritize the bottom lane. Surprise, we got your bottom your bottom altar. Surprise, we're up, tier, we're up a tier advantage. We have our heroics. LOL, what are you going to do? Oh, you got your heroics. Okay. We got level 13. You're still level 11. Yeah. Ella giggle. Like, <laughs> and and then the the Looney Tunes chase for Talent. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the jazz ends you say right like i i, I thought he was going to, to be dead like 100 percent, like 100 percent. but he landed his q onto uh heroes and with the cooldown reduction with his q it made it come back up three seconds i think uh sooner than yeah. i anticipated so uh you know he managed to escape with that one but he still only escaped with just like a hair of health right like i think it was like five or ten percent health so um, you know, and the sanctification was gone, the mighty gust was gone, but it was the 16 to 14 fight, so like they couldn't do anything about it. I thought actually the best part about that entire game was when um, four guys in a legend gave up. It was was it the two three? They gave mm -hmm. up uh, two of the altars for one, and then all they did was push bottom lane. They got both of the towers, and then they got um, they got level six to level five off of that, plus the. Um, What's it called? They they got half of a fort on bottom side as well, which basically like snowballed them into the um, mid game and of course the level ten advantage. So I it's thought that was really smart. Oh yeah. yeah, it was real smart. Like it is an excellent instance of macro play when you can make a game feel like six point five out of ten. <laughs> it literally came down to that one that one decision to push the push bottom and coordinated heroes of the storm mm -hmm. play when you get an advantage like that and you position yourself properly enough to never let that slight lead go. Yeah. That is a down payment and investment towards the mid and late game and four guys of legend saw dividends for real. <laughs> dividends for real. I love <laughs> the words you use, man. So good. <laughs> but we are going to game two. I'm going to lobby Meow as you are on Infernal Shrines. That's my personal favorite map to cast and play these days, dude. I've been playing Diablo. 
on it. Okay. Yeah. NBA Jam. <laughs> like, NBA can, I, can I say 